Good afternoon. Welcome to Eretz Yisrael. I'm sure we're holding in the Kuti Moran and Torah. Paz. Pei Zion. Paz is refined gold in Hebrew. And certainly all the words of the Tzaddik are refined gold because he's refined himself. So his speech is refined. It works together, right? If you're refined, your speech, your actions... Your ideas become refined as well. So the Tzaddik gives us the example of what to follow. And in this Torah, Titan Emet Yaakov, give truth to Jacob. He gives truth to Jacob. In other words, truth, we think, you know, truth is just uh, coming to me. <laughs> Isn't that funny? No, truth is a gift. And Chesed la Abraham, and God gave kindness to Abraham. We think that, well, I'm going to do an act, uh, a kind act today. I feel good, uh, in a good mood. No, God is giving you kindness to give to somebody else. And when we change our position in this relationship with the creator of the universe, we become part of the creator as opposed to part of the created. And I think you can hear the difference. It's just like we can hear the helicopters going by outside. I guess we got to protect all the... Oh, we got to protect God. Please protect all the soldiers and all the pilots and all the workers and thousands of people that are risking their lives for this war. The Rebbe begins. The subject is... We see with our senses... Immediately when he makes the decision to go in a straight path, he wants to return to his creator. He wants to return to the truth in the straight path. Mitorinam love dinim, dinim, obstacles, negativity automatically stands up to face him. And listen to what he says. And the explanation is the opposite. So now he's going to veer away from this particular point, the idea that you decide to do good and you get obstacles. Well, does that mean if I decide not to do good, I won't get obstacles? You know, a lot of people spend their lives avoiding obstacles. Well, let's call them challenges. The challenges are what make us. But what he's saying is that it's not exactly the way we understand it. Oh, I wanted to do good and everybody's blocking me and stopping me. No, you know, he's going to tell us something quite different. Listen. There are two types of fear in the Kabbalistic sense. Yirat onesh ve yirat romimut. Yirat Onish is fear of punishment. We all kind of relate to that to a degree. Yirat Omramamut is the idea of the awesomeness of God. God is so awesome, how could you not be in a little bit of fear, a little bit of awe, a little bit of, ooh, this is a time to be quiet and look to the heavens. Yirat Onish, Nikrat Tzedek. Now, the lower aspect called fear of punishment is called Tzedek. It's righteous. It's just justice. Sedek is justice. It's just to, to fear punishment because, you know, we want we don't want to hurt ourselves. Most people don't want to hurt themselves, I should say. A vast majority. Some people have a problem with that, but no, who wants punishment? So we try to avoid punishment. As we just said, we avoid challenge. Well, punishment is kind of, uh, oftentimes they seem like cousins, you know. Punishment <laughs> and challenges. Not exactly. But the awesome level, the fear of God is great. God is just great. Nothing to do with me. He just is great and he created an awesome universe. And we have to be in our little corner of the universe or our little you know, smidgen of time. And... That is called faith. So when you see God in the big picture, 
That's called faith. When you see God in the little picture of punishment, well, that's called justice. Because the person who believes that God is great and rules everything, every detail, the call on me in the root and source of all worlds. Your awe is not based in self preservation or survival or getting a good deal, right? Your, your awe is, is based in the fact that we have this. this living entity in our midst and we don't even know it or see it or hear it or even believe in it. It's very hard. But this is true awe of God. We are doohu and it is known. But we first have to have the smaller level to get to the bigger level and we shouldn't try to jump levels and think we're clever and uh, a little more talented. No, what do I need to fear punishment for? I just want to go straight to the fear of God, the, the awesomeness, the wonderful, the fantastic. It sounds kind of good. But he says, no, we have to go through fear of punishment first. Because when a person does fear, fear from punishment then he believes that God can do anything is the master of all the powers and is power very powerful himself so what do you think is it so hard to make the link first I need to fear punishment because that introduces the idea of presence and justice in the world. And when I get that idea, then I can move to the next idea of his awesomeness. Because being a judge is one level, a necessary level of the creator. But it's certainly not the beginning, uh, the end, I should say, of, of why we want to have awe of the creator. But what you get is a greater faith by believing in the lower level first, the fear of punishment, the fear that there is justice, there is, what do you want to call it, karma? That's fine with me. You know, the idea that you get what you sow, you receive what you put out there, good or bad, that's what comes back in one form or another. They come in different forms, obviously. However, it brings us to a greater level of faith when we accept that level first. We find, we find now we're back to our original thought. When a person decides he wants to go on the straight path, he has to have the lower level of amuna, of awe or fear that's called right justice. And this is the idea that God will judge the world fairly. Because if you have an unfair God, who wants such a God? Who wants such a situation? Nobody. So we have to conceive of him as being fair. Now, the fact is that he is. Because when you're that powerful that you can create a universe like this, he could do anything and change the molecules of anything and rework the chemistry of anything. You know, <laughs> why? That's, that's just way beyond the human imagination to, to think about 100 billion galaxies, you know? Wow. What about one galaxy? That's pretty big. With 400 million stars, that's that's a good size. And therefore, because the original level, when you make the decision to go back to Hashem, the, the judgments come on him not because he's being punished or because he's being um, judged harshly, Rather, they're coming because we have to go to the lower level of fear, which is justice. Which, and that is absolutely necessary to believe in the higher form of God. You've got to believe that he's fair before you start believing that he's awesome. And so we have to go through that level of test of our fear, of, of our, the idea of believing he's just. You have to be tested on it. 
People don't like to be tested about anything. And it's cert- certainly something so- as a- as abstract and and difficult, perhaps, as the idea that God is fair. After you've seen human history, what could you think anything is fair? You know, what ha- happened on October 7th, does that make God look fair? But the Jews come along and say, no, 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 no. God is always fair. It's humanity that's not fair to itself. Now, once you get that idea of the just, and you can deal with that God is just, then you can deal with the fact that there is punishment, there is redemption, there is, when I say redemption, the exchange of, of the lost article or the the, incap- the captives or the redemption of property, whatever it is when things go back to to somebody who owned them. This level precedes the idea of faith, the true idea of, I have faith. This, this, this God is much more than just our conception of him, much more of our faith in him is very limited, but that gives us to the level of sweetening, he says, Nintaki that we sweeten the judgment, then it automatically it's not punishment anymore. It doesn't even look like punishment. It comes out different. Your life is led differently. Because you see the sweetness ahead of time. And you see the sweetness because you're seeing that having faith in his greatness and fairness. So God says, oh, you believe that I'm fair? Well, I'll show you fair. I'll be extra fair. I'll be super sweet. And this is the idea of giving truth to Jacob. Ainu ah. And he says, that Jacob, our forefather, was the idea of awe of God. The heel of humility is the awe of God. So we want to talk about being humble. Well, we got to first talk about the idea of the awe in its simplest form, which is the awe of his justice and receiving justice. Then, you, when you accept that, you can enter the path called humility, which is called by the Ramchal and Der Hashem, the greatest of all traits. And that's repeated elsewhere in all Jewish literature. Humility is the number one trait, because it makes the most room for God in your life. In Chesed Abraham, Ki Avraham Nikra, Mi Sheba Ledav, the idea of Abraham, kindness to Abraham is somebody who comes to religion not for the sake of the fear of punishment. I don't want to get punished, rather from the sake of I want to attach myself to him because he's the only real deal in town. And I think all the fake news has proved that pretty well. And this is Lashon Avo Ram. I will come, Ram, exalted. And that's, if you split the word Avram, Avraham in two, you get Avoram, I will come exalted. In other words, that, that you come to see God's exaltedness. And this is a verse that comes from, the Zohar takes it from the Tanakh, but it's in Balak Zohar, that righteousness is, was the, the idea of his his girdle, his waistband. That's a certain le- mid, midsection level of the body, which of course is a, an emblem of the tree of life, which is a map of the forces of creation. So, and the map of the forces of forces of creation called the human body. Tzedek, righteousness is the midsection. Ve'amuna ezor chalatzav, and then emuna is is. That which has been freed above, to rescue, that you've redeemed, that faith frees, rescues the lower forces. But I have to have the, the, the item of justice first. Okay, so when we believe in the justice, we'll be taken to believe in the exaltedness. And this is a wonderful thing, this path. This is called righteous. Because when you join your faith with justice, that God is both just and He is faithful, 
you can rely on God a thousand percent of the time that he's going to do the right thing. And then you, this is called the union of, of faith. Emet is this idea of truth. This is where your, your, your truth becomes faith. And it's no longer, okay, I have faith in God, but... See, that but cuts us off from the real faith, from the completion of the idea that you have faith in everything and whatever is happening in your life at every level of your life and the level of your communication of simple people. Rabbi Nachman says you can know the, what the Shekhinah is doing by listening to the conversations of women when they're speaking together privately amongst themselves. They, they're more at peace than when men are around. You know, you ever notice that people's conversations change when women enter the room of men or men enter a room of women? Why is that? Why is that? That's probably a sheer we should do next time. Leonidor, I'll write that down. It's too big for now. But God bless you all to, to experience that union of your faith with your truth. Then you have both the qualities of Abraham and Jacob. And then all goodness and all the light will dwell upon you. And then, really, what more can you ask for when the infinite is upon you like the presence of a great bird or a beautiful light from, a, from the, the moon at night? And uh, really, it's not so far when we go with the path of the Rebbe. God bless you all. Have a great week. We'll see you again.